before this video starts. I'd like you all to know I have a visitor. <laughs> Hi! So, I just got back from the gastrologist, my fifth. Um, originally I was going to vlog it, like I did my last hospital vlog, but um, I was very stressed about this appointment, so I decided that a sit down video recap afterward would be a little bit easier <laughs> on me. Uh, yeah. So. I was nervous for this appointment. Like I said, this was my fifth gastrologist. I had a pediatric gastrologist. Are there any cars going by? Oh my god. I had a pediatric gastrologist. Then I saw one in town. He didn't have the equipment necessary to help me, so he sent me to one in Bangor. The one in Bangor left, so I was given a new one. And that gastrologist made me very, very uncomfortable. Um. So, just is a story for another day. Yeah, so, it's my fifth. And I can say now, I had a wonderful time. He was very kind, very nice, and very much wanting to help me. Which is, for some reason, very hard to find in a doctor. I don't know why. Um, but yes. So, the appointment went very well. Um, we have decided that, first of all, I have celiac disease. It might seem weird to say, but I've had two blood tests for it and both came back inconclusive. But now that I've gone about four years now without eating wheat, and anytime I do have one, I have celiac-like uh, responses, like stomach pain, fatigue, um, things like that. I think it's pretty safe to say I have celiac. Just throw that out there. <laughs> um, but yeah, we talked about everything that's happened in the past, tests and all of that. Um, and during this part of reviewing all of my tests that I have done, the doctor brought up something very interesting. He said that when I had my gastro emptying study done back in 2021, that I had a slight delay. I like, looked at him and was like, no, I didn't. So yeah, it says it right here. Did you not get uh, the form? For those who have had the pleasure of not having to deal with a doctor outside of your primary care, uh, basically when you get any major test done, they send you a little letter in the mail saying uh, the results of the test and when I got my letter it stated that there was no delay that everything was perfectly normal so they lied to me they lied to me why do doctors lie I hate it so yeah so after we sat and discussed the results of my last colonoscopy, a blood test, anything I had done in the last two years since I had those tests done personally, he decided to have me lay back and he kind of pushed on my stomach. And so he could know like where the pain was and where it was tender and stuff. Then we found the spot that was the worst. He put pressure on it and said, now do a sit up basically. Uh, so he had like, I can't, I don't know if I can show you, like put his hand right here. I like, woo. <laughs> I did like a sit up and the pain, the pain, the pain it was so bad. When I tell you it was so bad, but this was actually very helpful for him. Because he said that the most likely reason I'm still having this pain now that I'm not eating wheat is from my acid reflux. So recap before we get into acid reflux. I started having abdominal pain 11 years ago. Um, 
I stopped eating wheat. The abdominal pain, for the most part, went away. And now we are here, 2023, still having some pain, still kind of struggling, but doing a lot better than I was. And acid reflux is something I've realized is happening for a while. At first I thought it was tied to my allergy and that I would stop eating wheat and that would go away. Spoiler alert, it didn't. <laughs> so now we're trying to figure out ways to help it. Now this acid reflux caused this pain because the wall on my abdomen on the inside is most likely just kind of tender and not doing so hot. So when I have that acid reflux, it pushes against one another and causes that pain that I feel like right under my ribs. Another problem, which we will be addressing in February, is my throat. Me and my doctor, for my allergy, my allergist, yes, I forgot the name for an allergist, leave me alone. <laughs> Um, we are a bit concerned that I may have some scarring in my throat because I was throwing up two to three times a week for like a year. Not like a year. Two to three times a week for like three or four years. <laughs> Very different. And so now he's kind of worried now that this hasn't gone away that there might be some permanent damage done. So... I plan on going to see an ENT just to get that checked out, but one thing that I also experience is I have a hard time swallowing food. It can kind of get stuck here at like middle base of my throat kind of thing. And what I learned is your acid reflux can cause it food not to be able to go down because there's so much acid in your throat. Um, so that are most likely tied, but another thing is the reason I have so much acid in my stomach is because of my slow emptying of my- <laughs> which means I could have figured this out three years ago, that I had a slight delay, I was having acid reflux, and that they were connected, that I could have gotten this medicine. And this is like one of the reasons, like, if you know chronically ill people, they get so frustrated at doctors when they're not totally honest because a slight delay in my emptying doesn't sound like it would be that big of a deal. It is most likely the reason for all of my stomach pain. Like, that, that's the reason. Had the doctor just been honest with me, I could have gone forward with that. But I couldn't. Until now. <laughs> so, tomorrow I should be getting my new prescription for omeprazole, which is a stronger acid reflux than the fluorodine I had been taking. And hopefully, uh, I will be seeing him again in January, January they said. Um, hopefully I have some positive news that things are going better, that I'm feeling better. <laughs> um, yeah. In conclusion, doctors are stupid. Don't listen to the bad ones. Listen to the good ones. And trust your gut, even if it hurts. <laughs> That's the conclusion for this video. See, I hope you didn't mind that this wasn't a vlog vlog. It was more me sitting. Dog and toe. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm feeling a lot better now. You should have seen me this morning. I was stressed. I was tired. I was miserable. Um, but now I'm doing a lot better. That I feel like we have a positive move forward. Um, yeah, this is great. I'm so happy. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, like and subscribe helps me out. See you next week, baby. Ooh.
update this on in this video. Next week, Halloween stories, and they are hilarious because I'm eight, and what eight-year-old does Halloween not embarrassingly? <laughs> See you then.